short video i'll be discussing about tips and tricks how to study during your hectic residency so currently i'm done with my medicine residency almost 15 20 days to complete the tenure uh, so the newly joined first years come to me and they ask me sir how did you try to study how did you squeeze time to study separately from harrison's or from any ss book regarding a uh, regarding a topic during a residency we are flooded with a lot of patients we are we see gi bleed patients we see a lot of hepatic and we see a lot of strokes how did you separately study for during a medicine residency so i would like to break down that things because i feel that uh, the process of learning is it it is due to it is from multi uh, multiple sources so you have to understand that where you are during, with the with the background of the patient is very important so you are going to learn from them but you have to be smart enough to learn from them so i am going to share you five major points how what i what i used my resources during my hectic schedule especially during the first year of residency and my third year of residency where i where i used to be busy up reading apart from the for my university exams so the first resource which i felt was very most important was up to date app so i used to hear from my seniors that this is a very good app so i i i took it during my first year of residency so how did i utilize that app so for example we see a lot of cases so for example we see a case of nephrotic syndrome a patient who is come with frothy urine anasarca with a 5 gram protein in the urine and uh, you see hypercholesterolemia hypertriglyceridemia the, urine, the serum albumin is only 1.6 so i um, and he is a 55 year old male non diabetic so he is a case of adult onset nephrotic syndrome under evaluation so during that time i used to uh, search for adult onset nephrotic syndrome i used to get a get few few flow charts to investigate the patient so how do you approach as a case of adult onset nephrotic syndrome and then based on the findings how do you treat the patient so this is one important thing which i feel that up to date provides you quick algorithms to investigate the patient to treat the patient and they are quite authentic and quite quite easier to understand so when you correlate with the patient you you apply those things with the up to date you consolidate things the apart from the approach and the treatment algorithm the third thing which we commonly use up to date is to check the interaction of the drugs so for example if a patient is on almost three or four anti epileptic drugs and he is also on some other drugs for an autoimmune disease or other drug for um, uh, some um, some other disease it is very important to monitor it is also very important to um the document thing that there is no interaction between the anti epileptic drugs or even the other antibiotics when in a patient of sepsis who is intubated in the icu has multiple comorbidities it is very important at least to check once when you are done with all your major poly for pharmacology so it is very important so i feel up to date provides a very good uh, source for checking the drug interactions the fourth thing which we which we commonly use is dosing of the drug so we have a lot of patients who have who have chronic renal failure who have who are chronic liver parenchymal diseases so we adjust the drug dosing according to the hepatic and the renal clearance and the dysfunction and also when especially when we are not sure about the drug dosing for example in spontaneous bacterial peritonitis we use cefotaxim 2 g hourly so we there are you should not underdose the patient especially in patients who are obese especially patients we should not overdose when patients are uh, in uh, multi organ failure so you will have to adjust the drug dosing according to it where and and you get a very good about uh, information about the drug even i i visit um, up to date to see uh, the appropriate uh, mechanism of action of a lot of drugs and the fifth point is to read a re- read rare topics so you you find a case of congenital dyserythropoietic anemia recently diagnosed you know nothing about the condition so you search um up to date and believe me i have i've read a lot of resources but up to date is the quickest um resource to read a rare topic and it provides a good enough information about that rare topic so you get an a fair idea that what exactly is the condition and what are the basic investigation and treatment modalities available the other thing is it is quite quite uh, updated and it uh, it is uh, reviewed over time so you get fresh data and it you can download it as into your into your phone and it has a downloadable sorry downloadable data of approximately 1.5 gigabytes so which is simple enough 
the second point which we second resource which i commonly used is was medical so uh, from uh, using it for uh, body mass index to your body surface area for giving chemotherapy to the patients to calculating scores like fib4 uh, autoimmune uh, autoimmune hepatitis simplified score or plasmic score for your ttp or discriminant fraction in cases of your alcoholic hepatitis to either start or not about the steroids so this is a very simple and a common source where you can calculate simple calculators a simple scores and you can document them so it is quite simple and uh, simple resource to use uh, and i found it very important the third point is that um, i always carry a pdf of harrison's the latest edition uh, and uh, i have while after using it for almost 6 months or 6 months or a year you get an idea where exactly the topics are you you have symptomatology you have your uh, systemic uh, harrison's part where you have in the initial in the systemic part you have your uh, approach to the patient of neurological patient or approach to a patient with altered sensorium and in the systemic part also you have very good algorithms very good flow charts how to diagnose the patient how to treat the patient so i feel harrison's has to be uh, into your uh, phone uh, so that you quickly um, search for your topics whatever you see and then you revise it so that when you read harrison's in toto during your second year you always have that uh, feeling that you have seen all those things you have seen the flow charts you have seen the seen the tables while you while, while you have uh, read during your first year uh, while seeing the patients the fourth resource which i feel is very important is is the part that how do you we learn ecg which is one of the topic which is very vast which is very um, very dynamic so i feel that uh, i i used to i used to read from balthazar but then carrying a book it was very difficult for me to carry a book so i i got a resource from my seniors it is the ecg in the fast lane so this website is has very simplified crisp knowledge about all the ecg findings abnormal ecg findings you you can see all those findings so for example recently i got a, a patient who who had come with only common cold but then when i had examined him i surprisingly the so heart sound and the pex beat was on the right side of the chest and when we confirmed it on the x ray he had dextrocardia so i had guessed i i, I had guessed about his ecg findings we got his ecg we saw global negativity in the lead one and global positivity in avr and i had just googled ecg in first line dextrocardia and you can see there are good examples there are good simplified points and there are very much crisp explanation of the ecg findings which i feel that is very handy and very important and so for example when you go to the rounds your consultant tells you the patient has got an incomplete rbbb you just go on ecg in first line you they explain you what exactly is incomplete and a complete rbbb even lvbb what are the more common causes of rbbb and lvbb so i feel this is a very good resource to develop your ecg knowledge over 3 years of your residency and even after that the fifth and the last resource which i feel is very 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 important is your personal collection you personally collect your own ecgs so you if you have a good patient with wpw syndrome or a case of complete heart block you get a xerox ecg of that patient and uh, you have your own collection in a separate file you so it so that you consolidate things you write on the ecg what is the age of the patient you write what has he come with the complaints of and you have recorded ecg with the so and so indications and you see see these findings on the ecg that is your personal collection it consolidates um, consolidates what what you have seen uh, during your residency so i have almost 100 of 100 of the ecgs of the patient so other other collection is your x ray collection so uh, going from normal x ray is like mild pleural effusion moderate pleural effusion gross pleural effusion to mid zone lower zone consolidation or uh, post cox or emphysema still that you can have x ray findings like a lung abscess or a cavity and so these are x ray um collection which you will never forget in life you will make that collection you will you, the best thing you can do is uh, uh, the thing you can do is click photographs and and write all those details in your ipad on a separate folder the other thing is clinical findings you see pill rolling tremors you see patient with 
mirror sun sign click a videograph with the consent of the patient and keep into your laptop so that you have a collection of all the clinical findings and some rare findings your consultants uh, consultant demonstrates um, a palmar mental reflex so you rarely see all those things so i feel that it is important to um, make your own collection the other thing is uh, ct ct images mri images scopy reports i found them very interesting because they they were colorful so ranging from uh, gastritis to peptic peptic ulcer disease to esophageal ulcers to gastroesophageal ulcers uh, to give your watermelon stomach to your door gi scopy reports colonoscopy reports with where patient have been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis crohn disease or a mm, uh, or a colon mass or even to rarer things like what i have seen is familiar adenomatous polyposis with almost hundreds of polyps to the colon so when you when you see those thing when you see those reports it is hard to hard to forget all those topics and it gets consolidated so in my first year i saw a case of familiar adenomatous polyposis diagnosed on colonoscopy and then we did a genetic studies of that patient i still have the report photo of the report of the genetic studies where um, your apc gene on the fifth chromosome was positive um so you don't forget when you have your own collection the other thing is you you when you then the procedures are exam done you you are you are supposed to see the procedures you see a procedure for to do a knee tapping or you go and see a procedure of pericardiocentesis so it consolidates it and it keeps keeps into your long term memory and a rare rare investigation like emg eeg at least see them once and you are when you are posted in super specialties go and see an angio go and see a ptca go and see a renal biopsy being performed or a permacat being inserted so that you consolidate overall believe into the process things are you you are going to learn things into a day by day it is going to be a cumulative process so don't uh, be in the concept that uh, at the end of the 3 years at the end of the 3 years in 2 months i'm going to read harris and it is going to be there. you will you will you will realize that over 3 years if you have read uh, if you have read if you have uh, seen patients and if you have consolidated with all the things it is it is easier way it is and it is a better way to consolidate your knowledge and go go forward with a good amount of knowledge of your general medicine so i feel this is a, a good amount of um, Uh, information for you, and if you find uh, other things to, to be as a your doubt, you can put into the comment box. I'll be replying, and as I'm free. Thank you.